of Australian scientists is aiming to succeed where fashion has failed and build a comfortable, high-tech, bionic bra that can provide any woman the right amount of breast support when she needs it. Most of them are designed for aesthetics, to look good. And often they don't really take into consideration the anatomy, what we have to support. Capturing the shape. In research conducted over 15 years, Professor Julie Steele and her team have scanned the shape and size of breasts and analysed their movement during physical activity. Now, we know that most sports bras, the ones that are the most supportive, tend to be the most uncomfortable. They tend to be tight and compressive. The idea being that if I want to stop my breasts moving, if I can squish them in against my chest, it's going to stop them moving as much. But that's really uncomfortable. So what we want to do is have a bra that can respond. When do you need that extra compression? When do you need that tightness? And it can tighten up and provide that support. But when you don't need it, it can relax. Until recently, such a bra has been unachievable, both technically and commercially. But advances in materials science have finally brought it much closer to reality. The bra is a really challenging application. There's two basic elements. We need to be able to sense breast motion, monitor breast motion, and we need, be, need to be able to control it. So we need materials that can be fully integrated into a bra structure that perform those two functions. Okay, so to monitor breast movement, the team has replaced conventional motion sensors with novel high-tech fibres that are woven seamlessly into the fabric. So we, we take materials that are inherently stretchy uh, and we can spin fibres uh, from that material, for example, polyurethane. Now, what we do is add into that fibre structure uh, a conducting material like graphene. And we still make the fibre that has that stretchy capability. We haven't interfered with that, but it does conduct electricity now. And that conductivity varies as we stretch the fibre. So we have a means of a, a dynamic sensor, a, a human movement sensor, uh, based within the inherent property of that fibre. So the sensors can be embedded anywhere. Our research has shown that the best place is to put them under the cup. That means that they can then detect how much the breasts move because they get stretched, also how, how quickly or how frequently the breasts are moving. The biggest force that will cause the breast to move vertically is when your foot hits the ground. So if you jog for nine kilometres an hour for, say, an hour, your heel strikes the ground 10,000 times, then your breasts will slap down 10,000 times. So often, the larger the breast, the more they can move. And this is a lot of pain. If you could imagine, you know, we're talking about 8, 10, even 15 centimetres of vertical breast movement. To increase breast support during periods of physical activity, the bra incorporates newly developed artificial muscle technology. This is the artificial muscles that Professor Wallace's team has developed. So what these do is that when the sensor sends a signal, these then actually contract to pull the bra in and to increase the compression on the breasts. So these can really be put anywhere. It's 100 times stronger than human muscle and it's made from fishing line. It basically takes fishing line and by twisting it and subsequently coiling it, we can amplify the inherent uh, thermal contraction properties. Uh, and so it, fishing line, of course, is incredibly strong. Uh, and so we can create incredibly strong muscles. So for example, one gram of artificial muscle is capable of lifting six kilograms of weight. I mean, that's incredible performance from a very simple material just because of the way it's fabricated. And we can amplify that even further by taking those muscles and, and braiding them together into a textile structure. So it's a very scalable technology. The muscles are made to contract by heating conductive elements wrapped around the fishing line. But this requires battery power and conventional batteries aren't a long-term solution. 
So Professor Wallace's team is developing thread-like batteries that can also be woven into the structures. In fact, the threads are the battery components. So we would have a, a thread that's the equivalent of the positive electrode than a conventional battery, or one that's the equivalent of the negative electrode, and, and other fibres that are the electrolyte that you would find in a conventional battery. But here we've transformed them into fibres that have that capability. And now we have the possibility of braiding that into a structure and, and optimising the positioning of each of those fibres so that we get the best performance. The aim is to develop a bra that can be customised for the individual using 3D printing technology. You know, everybody's a different size, everybody's a different fit, uh, and so the fact that you can be scanned and have your garment, let's say the bionic bra, personalised for you uh, in terms of where the sensors might go, uh, where the artificial muscle technology might be incorporated within the bionic bra, it's all about personalisation, not just so as it looks good, that personalisation is very important for getting the maximum performance out of the structure. They're confident the technology will leave the lab and have applications in many other wearable technologies, such as a sleeve that massages limbs affected by lymphedema. I think all the materials, all the componentry is there now. We have very stable and very rapid sensing technologies. We have the artificial muscle technology. Now we need really clever ways to integrate these through fabrication to build new technologies that, of course, in the short term we'll use to create the bionic bra, but will be applicable in a wide range of applications uh, once they're realised. Hey, you want to go? I think the technology has come to a point where we can actually make wearable technologies that we could only dream about before.